today I have 10 game changing tips that will help you tremendously improve in Civilization 6 and quite a few of these tips you probably don't even know about and with these tips you will be pulling more girls than ever before or at least that's what I told myself. Now do you know how those damn cities keep healing themselves after every turn? Well rage no longer because there is a lovely game mechanic where if you surround the city with units the city won't heal. Now to explain this I have to pull out the most high tech Civ 6 analysis device. I'm really putting my head on the line showing you guys this device but anything for a good Civ 6 video. Now as you see here we have a lovely little city and a unit. Now when it comes to stopping the city from healing each tile around the city must be occupied and a unit occupies the tile that it is on as well as the tiles to either side of the unit. So if you have units in all the positions as you see here the city is considered fully surrounded and cannot heal. This is going to make conquering cities way quicker as you won't be fighting against the constantly rising health of a city ultimately saving you time and units. Now when it comes to destroying the environment us humans seem to be very good at it. So good that we even include it in video games and yes I'm talking about chopping and harvesting resources. Now chopping is a fantastic tool in Civ 6 especially early on as you can quickly chop out forests, tiles for production to help you quickly mass an army or spam settlers for a quick land grab. In conjunction with the handsome devil himself Magnus who provides an extra 50% towards yields for chopping you can really speed things up early on. Now one advantage of chopping early is since you have only a few population the tiles you're chopping aren't actually being worked in that current point of time so it's worthwhile to chop although if it's a tile that you're working chop at your own risk you could definitely make an argument against chopping something along the lines of oh that international box what about the culture but no we're not feeling that we like our production so we're going to continue chopping now amenities are extremely overlooked and a disturbing amount of people don't actually know the purpose of amenities other than stopping your people from rioting amenities main function is its effect on cities yields for example a city with zero to two amenities will have no effect on the city's yields but a city with plus three amenities will have a 10% bonus on yields and a city having five plus amenities will have a 20% bonus on yields and having negative amenities will have the opposite effect. Now when it comes to settling in Civ 6 there's one game changing trick that not a lot of people know about and that's that you can settle on luxury and strategic resources to get better starting yields and access to luxury resources without having to improve the tile to get it. However one thing that is important to mention is that you have to unlock the tech for the luxury resource before you get access to it. For example here I settle on jade but it's not until I unlock mining that it gives me the jade luxury resource. Then you can either choose to sell the resource off for gold or keep it for amenities. Either way it's going to get you off to a really really good start. And generally speaking luxury resources always have strong base yields as well as the features that further improve the yields of the tile. So if you can settle on a luxury resource to get a strong base for your city and then have a good first tile to work you're going to have yourself one mighty fine city. Now if you want six inches wear it way wrong script now if you want to take the red pill and see how you're going against the ai then turn on banners to present the stats it's fantastic totally not depressing at all But seriously, this is a huge time saver, as you can see really the main stats you want on display of your own and of other civs. Now if you've been a supporter of the channel for the past 3 weeks that I've started making videos, then you know how much of a fanboy I am of support units in Civ 6. Not only are they mobile as hell, share the same points with the unit they are attached to, and look cool which just makes them so much better, the support units such as the battering ram absolutely destroy city walls in the blink of an eye, and siege towers ignore the fact that walls even exist doing damage directly to the city. Now I am very much an advocate for going with these support units early on rather than siege units due to siege units just being very slow and low in hit points. Although this doesn't mean siege units aren't good, they just require a few more brain cells than I have to be used well. And I lean towards the fast moving and aggressive play that support units have when it comes to attacking cities in the early game that have ancient or medieval era walls. Now this next tip may be more dry than a grandma but it's important especially for those new to Civ 6 and it is to master a specific leader or sieve rather than constantly trying new ones. And because Civ 6 is such a detailed and complex game, if you really learn to master a certain sieve, learn all of their abilities and the most effective ways to use it, and just all the small details about a sieve, you will really become the best player you possibly can because a lot of sieve surrounds the leader and the leader's abilities, so learning to play a leader well will go a long way, trust me. Now while I'm a hypocrite with double standards that doesn't follow his own advice, this is 
definitely the quickest way to improve and win more games in Civ 6. This video is sponsored by absolutely nobody, so like and sub. Now going off the back of the point I just made about me being a hypocrite, I'll be going against my advice as of two weeks ago, which is to build scouts first. Now as my subscribers pointed out to me, building a scout first can be very useful to find goodie huts, get envoys from city states because you met them first, scouting for new spots to settle, gaining error score for an early game build age, which is almost like handing yourself a victory, and probably many other reasons that I can't think of in this very point in time, but I'm sure an absolute giga chad will comment them down below. Now while going for a scout first instead of a warrior or slinger may be risky on higher difficulties, so long as you keep your first warrior that you start off with close and kill any barbarian scouts before they get back to their camp will allow you to pull off this very greedy play, which is going to pay off big time. Although of course there will be situations where going with the slinger first might be a better idea. For example on TSL starts where you might be in Europe and you know that there's going to be plenty of other civs nearby and you need that military strength to stop them from invading you. Now ladies and gentlemen and any other genders that exist, this next tip will save your ass big time and it's to send delegations to civs when you first meet them because this will make them more likely to not despise you meaning they won't kill you and your measly little city straight away. And why you should send it straight away is because the deity AI only really gives you one chance to send a delegation and that's when you first meet them. As you see here I try to send a delegation the turn after I meet the guy's name that I'm not going to try to pronounce because it will get me cancelled. He rejects it, meaning he'll probably hate me for the rest of the game for no good reason. Now in Civ 6, forward planning is everything, so make sure you plan out your districts to maximize the adjacency bonuses you can get. Not only will this allow you to make the best districts possible, it will also help you to stay on track with the planned victory type that you are aiming for without getting distracted. As a chap with the attention span shorter than Danny DeVito, this is definitely a must do for me. Planning out your districts is definitely a really good habit to get into too early on, especially when it comes to making industrial zones as they require more district planning to make a strong industrial zone. Also the more experience you get with planning out districts, the better you will also get at settling because you'll know what areas are good for what districts. For example, if you have a nice floodplains area, you know that you can get a really good industrial zone in there because you can make dams and aqueducts. Do you like the look of this scrumptious mod right here? Well if you want to get this mod and another of the 5 best mods to make you an absolute goat in Civ 6, then check out this video where you can get precisely that. Thank you so much for watching the video.